By now we have learned about glycolysis in which glucose is broken down and then we have learned about Krebs cycle in which the final product of glycolysis that is the pyruvic acid is further broken down. But still we haven't seen much production of ATP in the process. Rather we know that many NADPH2 and FADH2 are also formed. So here in this electron transport system, we will study about how ATP is formed or energy is released by NADH2 and FADH2 formed in Krebs cycle. So, so what is the meaning of this electron transport system? So, from NADH2 or FADH2, the electrons are transported downhill. So, the whole metabolic process which involves the transport of electron from one carrier to another is known as electron transport chain. Now let us see how it occurs. It mainly occurs in inner membrane of mitochondria. So as you can see in this diagram that the NADH2 formed during Krebs cycle in the matrix of mitochondria, they will release their electrons in the inner membrane of mitochondria. So that means the NADH2 is getting reduced. So the enzyme used here will be NADH dehydrogenase and this is known as complex 1. Now next these electrons are then given up to ubiquinone. Now here the ubiquinone also accepts the electron from FADH2 which was also formed in Krebs cycle, right? So, now the ubiquinone is reduced. So, this reduced form of ubiquinone is known as ubiquinol. And this FADH2 complex is known as complex number 2. Now, then the electron is transferred from this ubiquinol to cytochrome C via cytochrome B C1 which makes complex number 2. 3. This cytochrome C is a small protein which is present at the outer side of the inner mitochondrial membrane and this transfers the electron to the complex number 4 which comprises of cytochrome A and A3. And now from this complex 4, the finally the electron goes to oxygen which is the final electron acceptor. And then the oxygen receives it and forms water. And thus in this whole process one molecule of water is formed. So you have seen how the electrons are transported from NADH2 or FADH2 to the oxygen. But again where is the formation of ATP in the whole process? So now we will come to the formation of ATP. Because the energy from these oxidation reduction reactions is used to make the proton gradient. And by now you all know that a proton gradient is very much essential to form ATP from ATP synthase. So now these electrons pass from complex 4 to ATP synthase which is complex number 5. Now, this ATP synthase forms the ATP by chemiosmotic hypothesis which is given by Peter Michel. And according to this hypothesis, the energy or the ATP is formed because of the proton motive force which is generated by the formation of proton gradient. So, this is the structure of ATP synthase which consists of two units, F0 unit which is a membrane protein and F1 unit which is associated with F0. Now, this F1 unit has the catalytic activity which is coupled by the transfer of protons. So, by the transfer of two protons at a time, one molecule of ATP is formed from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So from one molecule of NADH2, from one molecule of NADH2, 
to three pairs of hydrogen or H plus that is three pairs of protons are produced. It means three molecules of ATP are formed from one NADH2, right? Now from one FADH2, two pairs of protons are released. It means from one FADH2, two ATPs are formed, right? So now as you have seen initially in the electron transport chain that all the electrons are transferred from NADH2 to the complex number 4. So it means because of this transfer of electron the species are oxidized right the NADH and FADH they are oxidized now because they have released their electrons. So and finally because of the complex 5 which is ATP synthase there is phosphorylation of ADP to form ATP molecules. So thus I can say here oxidation is coupled by phosphorylation and so this whole process is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Clear? So, in this lesson we have studied about the whole electron transport system which consists of four complex and the fifth complex being ATP synthase where again the electrons are transported and ATP is generated by proton motive force by the hypothesis known as chemiosmotic hypothesis given by Peter Michel. And then we saw that 1 NADH makes 3 ATP and 1 FADH molecule makes 2 ATPs and this whole process as it is an oxidative process and it is coupled by phosphorylation thus it is known as oxidative phosphorylation.